Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today, we are looking at Thailand's Shuttle Mark II. Hopefully that is the correct name that I'm saying, but it is this thing right here. But before we go any further, one thing I will just say right now is if I come over to this one, the creator did say they were trying to figure out a way of having the ramp extend out. So what I've done over here just spawned one in very quickly, slapped on the hinge and had a button there just to reverse it all the way down. This is one way you can just get away with having your ramp go all the way down to the ground and it doesn't stick out and won't make a problem when trying to dock up to a station using your rear connector. So yes, it's just a hinge on there with a bunch of blocks and a button just set to reverse the hinge. Anyway, coming back over to the ship right here, this ship is essentially a vanilla exploration ship where it's got all the basics you need to survive in survival mode. It uses hydrogen thrusters, it's got oxygen tanks, a small reactor on there, some renewable power and a small little airlock to make sure you're not going to waste any precious ice. So pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there you go, and there's the name, so hopefully I said that correctly. This thing is 1,718 small blocks using none of the DLC packs. And you can see it right there. It says trying to figure out how to make the ramp retractable for easier docking. So that's why I did the hinge demonstration. Yes, this is the ship and we shall go around the outside, then have a tour of the interior and fly it around for a bit. So coming all the way to the front here, this is what we get. This is our small cockpit where we've got a small control seat inside and it's been surrounded by some glass blocks to let you get a good view all the way around. To the left and the right of it, we've got an ore detector and antenna. And just surrounding the bottom there, we've got some nice rounded blocks in the gray and blue coloring. As we move around the side there, we're not gonna see it too much because it's gone for function overlooks. So yes, just coming around to here, we come to our first thruster pod, which has got a hydrogen thruster sticking out the front there. Then moving all the way around to the side of this, we've got a bunch more small hydrogen thrusters to help on our left and our right, as well as a blinking blue light. Moving all the way around to the back of our thruster pod, we've got another large hydrogen to push us along. Then going towards the back, here is a connector to connect to a station and recharge our hydrogen tanks up and our doorway to get in and out. So this is the vanilla ramp, which the creator was having a problem with and wanted it to be able to retract, which is why I did the demonstration with the hinge. So that's how that would work. And yes, I'll just go up inside where we've got a lovely little airlock, and then that would eventually go inside. But we'll come back to that a bit later. Going up and above, we're going to see some solar panels for some renewable power and some more hydrogen thrusters there on our little pods on the side. Moving all the way to the front, this is what we get. All the way down and underneath there, we've got a nice load of landing gear. So if we did manage to break one, we've got plenty of backups to make sure we can snap down onto a station. And we've got even more hydrogen thrusters to help us pull away from the ground. And there's the bottom of our ramp. And that is it for the outside. It's a very nice, simple ship with everything you need to survive if you're looking for that type of ship. So getting into my character, which is still over here, and flying it all the way up to here, it's time to go inside. So coming all the way around to the back and opening up the door, we are now greeted by an airlock. That should be closed. Oop, there we go. Let's pretend that didn't happen and open it up once again. So this is our airlock. We have no programmable blocks on here for an auto door and airlock script, which is fine because we can always manually open them. So a very small little room in here, enough to fit maybe two to three people. Then we can open this up and come inside. This is our small little area to carry your passengers around and of course where all our important stuff is being kept. Closing up that door and instantly on our left we've got a survival kit to recharge ourselves on and to respawn on. A small reactor there just for additional bit of power although our main form of power is going to come from our batteries right there. A couple gyroscopes are hidden along over there and we do have a medium cargo container which is sitting between our survival kit and connector so we can carry quite a few goods. But how do we access that container you're asking? So if I turn around and come over to here, we do have a small cargo container which is acting as a access point so we can get everything out of that container in case we need it. So yes, we've got our conveyors that go all along the floor which is linking everything up. And yes, there's our batteries, some chairs on this side 
We lose the batteries and the containers for a hydrogen tank, as well as an O2H2 generator, which linked all the way across to an oxygen tank with an air vent on it. And that is it for this room. Opening up this doorway, we're going to come into our cockpit, which the only problem with this cockpit is it doesn't have an air vent in there, so if you were to close that up, you would eventually suffocate inside. But it's not a big deal, you can just leave the door open and you're going to be 100% fine. With that out of the way, let's go into the cockpit, and this is the view we get. So looking all the way around here, we can see our ore detector there, our antenna over there, and we've got a good view all the way around in first person. As for our HUD setup, we don't have anything going on with that, so it's time to do a quick thruster test before we run out of hydrogen. This thing is very efficient with its hydrogen usage, as it's been quite a long time since I've been playing around with it, and it's only down to 19%. And as for the reactor itself, before we do a thruster test, you can switch that off, it's not needed, it's only there to help the batteries. With that turned off, we go down to two days of idle power, and moving around, we get 21 hours. So there we go. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got a nice bit of speed on there. It's not the fastest thing in the game, but it certainly is useful for a small ship. Stopping as well is very good, because we've got the same thrust distribution for the forwards and backwards. So there we go. Going left. And going right, we've got a nice amount of speed there. And there's the right. Going down, we've got a nice lot of speed. And going up, once again, a nice lot of speed, which feels the fastest. So going forwards and tilting like that, you're going to get a nice lot of speed. So going back to the thruster test and wiggling my mouse around, we've got a nice balance of control and a weight to the mouse movements. So there we go, we've got a very nice setup with this ship. The one thing we could do for the hotbar just to flesh this out a little bit is drag our connector over here and set it to switch lock on and off so we don't have to press P. And we can come over to our groups where we do have all thrusters set up, just not placed. So we're going to have them toggle on and off. We can have the exterior lights on the head to toggle on and off with the interior. And a manual button for the landing gear. Let's go switch that on there. And there we go. So now we can turn off all our thrusters. We can turn off our lights on the inside and out. And yeah, we just fleshed that out a little bit. We could have some more controls over the ore detector on and off and all that. But that's entirely up to you. So yes, it's a very nice, very simple little ship to play around with if you're just starting out in survival mode and need a fairly small basic base to go and fly around with. But as for that, that is it for Thailand Shuttle Mark II. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you did want to play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Let's finish this off with a nice little crash, not too sure how well that'll do, but let's go like that. There we go. And we are relatively in one piece, that's actually quite good. So for a fairly fast collision, we've just damaged a few blocks on top. We have compromised in here, so air is going to be able to escape out there. We're just coming outside. Not too much damage. But yes, as I was saying, there's a link to it in the description below. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.